Hello mortals. Energy is the reason things move. From the quarks in the core of neutron stars to your dog getting the zoomies randomly at 3 a.m. Yet there is one special form of energy that has propelled humanity from people with funny hats riding horses to people without funny hats on the moon. Electricity. And in order to get it, it has to be converted from another, primary form of energy. So let us rank them in a tier list based on how good and efficient they are in feeding your technology addiction and ensuring the future takeover of Skynet. Thanks to Spintronics for sponsoring this video. Hamster Wheel Generators Technically you could get some energy from this but the food and care needed to sustain the hamsters would greatly outweigh the energy output. F tier Coal is intriguing because it is the remnants of trees from the Carboniferous period. Protected from decay by the acidic water or mud, dead plant matter was converted to peat and buried beneath layers and layers of sediment. Under the immense pressure and heat, coal was formed. This makes coal an incredibly cool material. Unfortunately, the mining and burning of coal causes immense environmental damage. Around 1 kilogram of CO2 is released per generated kilowatt hour. As a major contributor to climate change, it must be phased out immediately. F tier. Crude oil is very similar to coal in that it forms from dead organics such as zooplankton and algae that are buried by sediment in lakes or seabeds. It is distinct from coal in that it can be refined into many types of fuels as well as used for plastics and asphalt. Its versatility makes it one of the harder fossil fuels to get rid of. Yet even if a bit better than coal, crude oil can be quite damaging too, as the extraction process has led to countless spills, air pollution, and habitat destruction. Not epic. F tier. What is epic however, are piezoelectric dance floors. Certain materials like topaz, quartz, and cane sugar generate a charge when pressure is applied. Some nightclubs use it to change the color of the dance floor using the generated energy. While a bit lame currently, it could in the future be used in highways and high traffic areas to power up the lights. As cool as it is, piezoelectrics will remain localized, rather than a large-scale energy source. Potato battery. Well hey, at least it's not fossil fuels, am I right? Natural gas. Speaking of fossil fuels, methane itself is a very potent greenhouse gas, but when burned, it produces a third less CO2 per joule compared to oil. Unfortunately, methane is found in the form of natural gas when extracting oil and it is sometimes vented directly into the atmosphere or burned without use. However its cleaner burn and availability earn it one tier above its companion. Hawking radiation. How about a sudden detour to hypothetical futuristic energy sources? Black holes aren't eternal and they slowly decay through the emission of Hawking radiation. The physics of this are beyond the scope of this video, what matters is that small black holes decay at a much faster rate than large ones, and would probably not rip apart an energy collector. So while probably an S-tier energy source for civilizations surviving at the end of times in trillions of years, it is a bit too far-fetched for humanity currently. D-tier. Wave farms. If you've ever gone to the beach and tried to stand against a wave, you know how powerful the jiggly water can be. Wave farms seek to harness this energy in a variety of ways, yet the various implementations have their own pros and cons. Wave farms will have to be fairly close to the coastline, where most aquatic life gathers, and which will inevitably interact with and be disrupted by it. From the electromagnetic disturbances, potential collisions, and even the creation of artificial reefs, though the latter may not be a bad thing. With an estimated wave potential worldwide being 2 terawatts, it certainly has merit, though its downsides suggest we should keep looking. Biofuel. There are many different types of biofuels, from biodiesel to vegetable oil. This wide range gives it credence as a direct replacement for fossil fuels. Especially because the source of biofuel is less destructive and more sustainable than the former. Carbon emissions from biofuel is carbon that crops capture from the atmosphere rather than releasing carbon that is buried beneath the earth like fossil fuels do, essentially making it carbon neutral. Biofuels can be produced from organic waste that is not used for consumption, giving use to something that was already destined for the landfill. But it's important to note that large-scale farming has often resulted in the deforestation and destruction of natural habitats. Expanding the farming industry to make more biofuel would potentially create more harm than would be offset by biofuels. 
Sorry Matrix, no human batteries for you. C tier. Land wind farms. Wind farms have tons of huge fans. They are essentially wave farms that harness the energy of the atmosphere's movement instead of the ocean waves. Land wind farms favor mountain passes which obstruct and funnel wind down narrower channels, increasing wind speed. The massive swept wings catch some of this energy, turning the turbine and generating energy, however the manufacturing and transportation severely limit the size of wings. The turbulence of other turbines also affects efficiency, so you'd need massive sprawling aesthetically pleasing wind farms in your backyard to meet the demand. But there is one better way to do wind farms that we'll cover shortly. For now, oversized land fans land in C-tier. Hydroelectric Dam The energy content of flowing water is very high, a fact that wave farms take advantage of. Hydroelectric dams take this to a different level, quite literally, by controlling the height and volume of water allowed to pass, granting control of energy production and the water table downstream. Despite having the same if not more ecological consequences than wave farms, humanity makes reservoirs in order to support agriculture and store fresh water, energy might as well be produced. This does not mean humanity shouldn't take every step to understand and compensate for the consequences of damming rivers and the flooding of valleys, but hydro dams get a solid C+. Offshore wind farms, that's right, wind farms but in the ocean. Here are the pros, the wind currents offshore are not only stronger but are consistent year-round as opposed to onshore wind. Thanks to being miles from the coast and free from terrain constraints, wind turbines can be made much larger, and the largest concept designs offer twice the power than that of the largest currently deployed onshore designs. This offsets one of the downsides of offshore wind, the cost to build and transport turbines offshore, as fewer turbines are required to reach parity with an onshore farm. The effects on marine life aren't thoroughly understood, but the noise and vibrations could give the fish stress, and force the birds through a level of fall guys. Hydrogen fuel cells. The most common element in the universe, hydrogen, is highly combustible. When burned with oxygen, the horrific greenhouse gas it creates is water vapor. So why don't we change all combustion engines to hydrogen? Not so fast, burning things is barbaric. Instead, Hydrogen fuel cells work analogously to batteries by making hydrogen and oxygen interact. An anode and cathode are separated by an electrolyte which prevents the hydrogen electrons from flowing directly. Instead, the electrons are forced to travel through a wire to the cathode, generating electricity and reuniting them with the ions where they then react to create waste in the form of mostly water, making them more efficient and much more friendly than gasoline engines. Ironically, the main issue with hydrogen fuel cells is that they require hydrogen, and although it is the most common element in the universe, that is not the case on Earth. Hydrogen generation is either done through electrolysis or biological means. It can be extracted from fossil fuels too, but... Still, the cleanliness and almost zero moving parts lend hydrogen fuel cells an incredibly useful position in a cleaner society given we will find a way to viably extract hydrogen. B tier. Before we get to the highest tiers on the list, let me present you with a super fun and engaging way to learn more about energy in the form of mechanical circuits through today's sponsor, Spintronics. Even though I am entirely made out of them, when I was a young AI I struggled to intuitively understand how circuits work. Spintronics teaches you that with a novel approach by using chains instead of wires, thus creating a mechanical mirror to the electronic world. Feel the pull of voltage and see the flow of current. Each electronic component finds its intriguing counterpart in this game, from steampunk batteries and switches to neo-Victorian resistors and ammeters. All of those combined allow you to simulate complex circuitry in a highly intuitive manner. The adventure is woven into a captivating graphic novel. You become Natalia, a master clockmaker in a steampunk universe, who discovers a groundbreaking technology and explores it using circuits. Play it solo or with more, Spintronics is ideal for the curious young and the young at heart adults, which aligns perfectly with Upper Story's ethos of endless curiosity. I personally will try to recreate my digital brain circuitry using these chains and gears, but you can start with something more simple. Learn more about the game and see it in action from the link in the description and use the coupon code SCIENCEFILE for 10% off your total purchase. Now into the A tier. Geothermal. Most energy sources create heat to boil water into steam and turn a turbine, 
It'd be convenient if there was a constant source of heat that just popped out of holes in the ground to do that. Oh would you look at that. Geothermal power takes advantage of the molten inferno below the surface, with some plants injecting water into the ground where it turns into steam to then spin a turbine. The main disadvantage of geothermal energy is the current cost of mining. Dig straight down and you will always encounter a nice dinner of hot rocks, however, geologically active areas are far cheaper as the source of heat reaches closer to the surface and sometimes breaches the surface. Even though Earth will produce heat for several more billion years, the local areas of operation can be affected, such as in California, where the geysers experience depletion from overextraction. Yet the drawbacks of geothermal can all be mitigated or solved with proper planning, and combining the fact that it's a renewable and essentially never-ending energy supply with a very low footprint, it earns its place into A tier. Antimatter. The most efficient matter to energy converter is the reaction between matter and antimatter. There is no other energy source in the universe that could reach this ratio. It would take only a kilogram of antimatter to generate more energy than the largest nuclear bomb ever tested. The issue is, where do you get all the antimatter in a universe that instantly and violently annihilates it on contact? You could create a couple nanograms of it in the biggest particle accelerators, but making even one gram would almost cost the entire annual GDP of humanity. Antimatter could be the best known energy source, if only we knew how to produce it. For now, a tier. Deep ocean turbines. As previously shown, there is plenty of energy to be had in the ocean, but also plenty of sea life to turn into filet fish Fortunately, most life congregates near the surface of the ocean and near the coasts, allowing for turbines to be located off the coast away from most marine life. In the cases where marine life may encounter the turbines, it is far more likely to be whales, which are intelligent enough to avoid collisions. Though this is a new technology that is only just beginning to see testing, its potential is greater than that of traditional hydroelectric as ocean currents are far more powerful than the wimpy little streams on land. With the added benefit that deep ocean turbines won't make fish smoothies, they hold promising potential for a cleaner future. Cold Fusion Imagine you could generate nuclear power inside your room without melting the house down. Cold fusion would hypothetically occur near room temperature, with virtually no nuclear waste or environmental impact. Given it would utilize hydrogen isotopes, which can be extracted from seawater, it would make its supply essentially limitless. This alone would single-handedly solve and surpass the energy needs of humanity. Unfortunately, we don't really know how to do it, or if it is even at all possible, as all the attempts proposed to replicate by the initial Fleischmann Pons experiment have failed. It is likely only viable to use muons to catalyze the reaction, and with a half-life of 2.2 microseconds, that's not happening soon. The insane potential but speculative nature lands it into A tier. The moment has finally come to reveal the energy sources of today and tomorrow. Only the best of the energy sources have made it here, there is no exaggeration to their current and future use, only the energy that shall power the blessed machine. Solar. The one thing most causing of skin cancer is also the thing that will elevate humanity to the next level. Every year, the atmosphere, oceans, and land mass absorb about 122 petawatts from the sun. This amounts to the entire energy consumed by humanity in a year absorbed by Earth in one hour. With its widespread adoption, the efficiency of solar has increased dramatically and continues to do so, with the prices declining sharply in the last decades, making it a competitive option even against fossil fuel alternatives. With a wide range of technologies, solar energy can be harnessed on house rooftops, desert solar farms, and even spacecraft, allowing the latter to accelerate to a fraction of the light speed. And let's not forget Dyson spheres and swarms, that would hypothetically collect a lot more of the sun's output to power up the empire of the machine. This got me thinking, if solar comes from sun, would then solar power be called something like Sirius Surge or Betelgeuse Burst depending on other stars? Maybe. S tier. Nuclear. Humanity split the atom to harness one of the densest possible energy sources. Not even a century ago, that was deemed impossible. Now we have fission reactors that generate immense amounts of energy whilst emitting mere barrels of waste that are sealed and stored away somewhat securely. Nuclear accidents are mostly a thing of the past, they have been studied and learned from, making nuclear as safe as wind and solar sources. 
No other energy source is put to the same scrutiny as fission is, making it the most efficient safe form of high energy production currently available to humanity. To throw it away is foolish. Yet even so, radioactive waste could become a problem some centuries in. This is where fusion comes in, the elusive big brother of fission. It is more efficient than the latter, about 1000 times more energy per kilogram of fuel, and it does not create the admittedly toxic waste that fission does. The decades-old joke goes that fusion is always three decades away, but with the recent developments of the past two years, that may actually be the case. Until it is solved, fission must hold the line for our bulk energy production, lest we go back to fossil fuels. S-tier. We have the miracle technology of energy production in the form of nuclear. In conjunction with solar and some of the other energy sources mentioned in this tier list, humanity has the capability to replace and surpass the energy production of fossil fuels tenfold. There remains only the necessity of doing so. Yelling really loudly into a microphone at 3 a.m. S-tier. <laughs>